left hand main spar for the wing. So this is the forward one, uh, the rear one will be the same as this, but it'll be three and a half inches instead of six. Uh, wing attach, so that's doubled up, 100 thou, 80 thou, and then we've got 60 thou web, plus a 50 thou angle, and a 32 thou that wraps around it, and it's all riveted together. We've got a doubler on the other side here as well, so that's an 80 thou doubler there, just a transfer the loads between the top and bottom and there's the 32 thou web so that goes the whole way along rib spacings uh, 14 inches so here we've got um, an overlap instead of a splice between the outer and the inner um, 63 thou webs and this is the strut attached here and then there's your um, like an intercostal sort of thing between front and rear spars there'll be another two on here and then brace together also we've got the um, a doubler here as well just to transfer all that load from the strut out up to the wings and along so um yeah There's heaps of rivets in the thing took me ages good fun rear spar now Right hand wing spars are finally ready to rivet. Took a little bit of a while. I, I uh, lost a week because I managed to drill the, um, the the webs off on the rear spar the wrong way. No wonder it worked out beautifully the first time, but anyway, we're back to where we're at now. Um, so yeah, rivet them up and then we can start assembling them like this wing up here. I've got it strung up. There's um, about 30 pieces um, per spar with all the doublers and and, um, and everything like that for the build up. So yeah, it took a bit of time, but we're getting there. Okay, main spar is ready to rivet up. Um, all the rivets are in place. I like to have a rivet or a Clico in each hole just to stop things from moving about. Um, and the masking tape does two things. It protects the head from the snap of the rivet gun and it also holds a rivet in place while we move it about. Stops the whole job from moving around while we rivet it up. Good to go. So the right hand wing spars are done now. Ready to assemble on the jig and put the wing ribs on. This is what I was saying about before, about having that masking tape on the head, so it does two things, remember? Um, holds a rivet in, but it also protects the head. So, they look really nice. This is the wing spar splice, so that's your inner and outer webbing there. And it's splice, well you call it a splice, but it's, it's more of an overlap. Let's see, there's the rear one finishes there with the doubler. Makes it nice and solid through there where the wing attaches for the strut. And then here's your wing root. Um, I might make those tangs probably out of steel. They're T3 at the moment. They're probably strong enough. I'll do some calculations and think about it a bit more. But, um, and there's the extra doubler in there just to transfer the load as well. Turned out good. Next thing will be assemble it. Then we'll have two wings and then we can move on to the center section again. Progress is good.
So just getting ready to start thinking about covering this thing with uh, with metal, doing the skins. Just going over the whole thing just to make sure we're happy with everything. So the main thing that I come up with just before, not totally happy with, and I've been thinking about it for a couple of days, is the rear spar attach to the rib. Obviously the spar is your strength and the, and the, the rib is just going to transfer the loads from the skins and, and all that. The original concept of this was actually to cover it in fabric but i like metal so here we are and uh there's a little bracket on the front part just there that holds the rear the rear of the rib to the rear spar um but i don't know if you can sort of see there it does allow for a bit of flex just in the between the the spar and the rib so it can twist a little bit um, so, a little bit weird flight loads on the rear spar because of the, here's your, that's my aileron um, attach, and then there's a flap down there. So, if it can twist like that, that can, if it can twist like that, that means the, the, this part here can go up and down a fair way because of the moment arm and everything. So, that's no real, that's not fun. That can muck with all of your flight controls. So coming up with something to fix that, I come up with these little brackets. So one here and one on the other side as well underneath, I haven't done it yet. Um, that'll, that helps a bit. Still got a little bit of flex in there, so I sort of dropped it back a gear and had another think and come up with this bracket. So the, that goes all the way down that rib and picks up on the spine like that. Now that takes a giggle out of everything. So we'll end up doing that on all of the ribs, just to stiffen that whole rear, rear part up. So that eliminates any, any flex or um, potential flutter of, of the controls or anything like that. The other thing I've got to muck about with is um, there's a little bit of flex in this idler here for the aileron as well. So I've got to think about that a bit more. I've already added an extra little bracket in there to stiffen it all up to stop it and went, no, that's helped a fair bit but I can do a bit better than that I think so a bit more head scratching to do apart from that it's looking pretty sweet getting close and got the little trailing edge thing where the rivet the skins will rivet to and that'll help with all the all the shaping and stuff there's my fuel tank the idea jury's still out on that one still a bit more head scratching to do but that's about the idea, that's the concept that I'm going to run with at the moment. So that obviously part there is where the aileron push rod will come through. A um, bit under 60 litres there. So that'll give us about, oh, I don't know, three hours with uh, reserve. So I'll have one of these in each wing. So yeah, still thinking about that. We'll worry about these things first and then we'll come back to that one. So top wing skins are done. It's rather shiny. It's a bit cool. A little bit. So these skins go from the trailing edge and they wrap all the way around the leading edge and just underneath there like that. And they double up over the ribs. 16 thou skins. I would have preferred 20 thou but I had 16, so this is why I've done that. So the idea is um, we've got a double layer of skin there where the rivets pass, so hopefully that stops the cracking with the vibration. It's a theory I have. We'll find out, no doubt. A panel there I've got to make for the um, 
for the aileron push rod. Down the trailing edge, there's a flap mechanism there. So that's gonna sit up there like that. So another little fairing's gotta be made there. And that's a torque shaft for the flap. And this big hole here is where the fuel tank is gonna go. And there's the, there's the mounts for the tank. When I get round to that, so now I just gotta flip it over and do the bottom skins with all the inspection panels and all that sort of stuff. So, and then once that wing's done, I'll do the next one, which is up there ready to go. So shiny, love it. Alrighty then, for my next trick, bottom skins. Got it all mounted back up on the bench again. Got the two degree washout still. Um, got it nutted out now. Inspection hatches, where to put them. Trying to work out what I'd particularly like to have it keep an eye on while I'm in the future. 100 hourly inspections and all that sort of stuff. Strut attached there and there. So we've got to knot up something for that and probably try and run maybe a conduit or something like that for electrical lead cables. I don't know, I haven't really thought about nav lights or anything like that, but no doubt something would be handy. And then I've still got to knot out what we're going to do with the fuel tank area. But for now we can do the skins anyway. So, watch this space. <laughs> 